The vision of our church is to see Jesus glorified, to see the devil put to shame, to see sickness and all of the works of the devil put to shame. The videos that you just seen, um, that is the desire, every service, to see people healed, to see people saved. Because once we are saved, our life becomes changed. Not only we start going to church, not only you know we stop doing bad things, but Jesus Christ gives us a new heart and He gives us a new nature. He gives us a new life. And that life begins to grow every single day to become what God wants it to be. Our desire is to see Holy Spirit also move mightily in our own personal lives and for us to develop a relationship with Holy Spirit that He's not just a dove somewhere in heaven, that He's not a cloud of force, but He's a very close friend that we develop a relationship with every single day. Holy Spirit is a person. I so many times hear people say that they want to know Jesus and they say, oh, if Jesus would have been here today on earth, like in Jerusalem, I would quit my job. I would sell my house, sell my car, get a one-way ticket to Jerusalem, rent a nice hotel there, and go with Jesus every single day. What would you do if Jesus would be in Jerusalem? Would you, would you go to be with him? Would you leave everything you have to hang out with Jesus? Would you watch his YouTube channel? Would you subscribe to his podcast? Okay. How would you, what would you do if Jesus would be in Jerusalem? Well, let's change the question. What would you do if Jesus would be in Prosser? You're like, I'll bring him to Tri Cities. <laughs> I know what I would do. I would probably do what disciples did. But did you actually know? The disciples did that with Jesus, but it didn't really change their life. Because when Jesus was being betrayed, one guy left his clothes and ran naked from Jesus. One guy committed suicide and the other 11 ran for their life. The idea that we have is that if I am close to Jesus physically, my life will dramatically change. All the apostles will stand up in front of you and tell you, not really true. You can be actually the same. Thousands of people around Jesus and they were not changed. Now they experienced some miracles but not changed. But Jesus said, what's really going to change you is not when I am physically with you. It's when the Holy Spirit is spiritually in you. Jesus himself, who you and I dream to be with physically, said, if you be with me physically, that is not really going to change your life. What's going to change your life is if my spirit lives with you, in you, inwardly. You have everything you need for your life to be changed within your disposal. Everything you need for your life to be changed is within your reach. It's the person of the Holy Spirit. He is very close to you. As a Christian, as a believer in Jesus, the Bible says Holy Spirit lives in us. How beautiful is that? How wonderful is that? He doesn't live in Africa. He doesn't live in Asia. He doesn't live somewhere out there. He lives so close. He lives within us. That means that during worship I can say, precious Holy Spirit, I want you to be closer to me. Be closer to me. I give myself to you. Holy Spirit speak and lead me. That means that when I am in the car, Holy Spirit who lives in me, He can guide me and He can lead me and He can empower me. As I'm speaking right now with my thoughts, I'm speaking to you with my words but my thoughts are completely somewhere else. Because I'm asking this person of the Holy Spirit, not only to keep you awake, which also requires a miracle sometimes on Sunday morning, <laughs> but change you and change me in the process as well and Jesus says when you get up to speak in front of people he says don't worry what you have to say but he says trust in this person the Holy Spirit I remember last Sunday before our home group I was reading through the material we read through our home groups and and this uh, author in the book mentioned that Holy Spirit is a person and as a person he can be vexed means like tortured and I was like God 
I know devil, you know, tortures people, but I didn't, I know we can torture people. But I never knew that my behavior and my decisions can actually like torment, like hurt Holy Spirit. And after that, I was like, you know, I was looking at everything like the Bible and a, a computer and a TV. And I'm like, what in my life hinders this relationship? And what in my life can help this relationship? Develop a relationship with God inside of you trust in God inside of you I'm not talking about trust in you I'm not saying you are the God inside of you like the new age and a lot of religions that say that you have to connect to your chi no that's not chi that's flesh as a Christian we have a Holy Spirit he's not he she he is God and as a believer he lives in us he uses our consciousness to speak to us and most of us we love the God in heaven but we don't fellowship with God inside of us most of us we trust the God of the universe but not the God the Holy Spirit who lives in us to trust his voice to trust his leading to trust when he leads and guides us when you're about to give an offering and you hear that whisper take whatever you have on the other pocket and give that away as well so, when you when you're going to see a homeless person you know and the Holy Spirit begins to lead you Holy Spirit begins to guide you when you see somebody who's lonely I ask you that you develop a relationship with God who lives not in the next block not in the next room but inside of our spirit through the Holy Spirit can somebody say amen with that said I want to take a few moments to read the Word of God to us and bring a brief message and so if you have your Bible let's go to Gospel of Luke chapter 17 and verse 14 and Jesus said and when he saw them this is a story about 10 lepers when he saw them he said to them to the lepers go and show yourselves to the priests and as they went they were cleansed I want you to say that with me say as they went they were cleansed and another verse that we want to read is verse 19 so we know that 10 uh, 10 people were came to Jesus nine ten got healed nine went to the priest and one person gets he sees that he got healed and he runs back to Jesus and he said Jesus said to that man he said rise and go your way your faith has made you well I want us to say this simple prayer out loud after me say Lord Jesus open my heart to your word Lord Jesus open my heart to your spirit Lord Jesus open my heart to your faith amen I want to speak today today on the message called proper perspective proper perspective or proper priorities whatever the background said <laughs> proper priorities means the right priorities the power of right priorities we see 10 lepers coming to Jesus and they're lepers they're isolated from their families but it's interesting they still they refuse to isolate themselves from other lepers they still kept a sense of unity amongst themselves and together united they decided to approach Jesus it's interesting to notice that they are not asking Jesus to heal them or cleanse them they are asking Jesus to have mercy on them it's very important anytime we come to God having a problem not to ask God to change our problem but to change our heart many people come to God to change their circumstances but the interesting part with all of the bad circumstances in our life there's one common denominator and that is you and that is me and if God keeps changing our circumstances without ever changing our heart it's a matter of time we'll find ourselves in the same circumstances very quickly most of us don't need our circumstances to be changed first we need our heart to be changed first and therefore our prayer when we are in need in sickness in poverty marriage falling apart or our health falling apart or we have nightmares or attacks most of us are tempted to run to God and put our hand into his pocket and get a miracle and have him change our circumstances and many times you will see that the Lord will long in not doing that right away 
because he sees that the real problem is our sin the real problem is our heart and he wants to change the cause of our problem not just deal with the fruits of our problem can somebody say amen, amen. most of us are seeking healing when God wants to seek for us to seek forgiveness of our sin and these lepers I mean if there was anybody who should come to Jesus and scream and yell please Jesus heal us it will be these lepers yet we see them coming to Jesus and say please Jesus have mercy on us I'm not sure whether they heard the testimony of Bartimaeus when Bartimaeus used to be blind and instead of asking Jesus to open his eyes he asked Jesus to have mercy on him don't be afraid sometimes people are like well if I don't tell God about my problems he's not gonna know really you believe he doesn't know about your problems and you believe somehow he's in heaven and you're on earth and he hears you why pray if he doesn't know your problems if he doesn't know your problems he can't hear you then God knows everything but God wants to know that you know your problems God wants to know that I know the real problem that I have and the real problem is my heart not always my pocket not always my relationships and not always my circumstances anytime you try to advise couples who have marital problems and the funny part is they always feel like it's the other person and if you ask him write a circle and take how much of the circle is your problem and you will ever see somebody saying all of the circle is my problem people say no it's 99 percent her problem and mine is one small slice and the only reason mine has a slice is because of her 99 <laughs> and please counselor i'm paying you convince my wife to get rid of her 99 problems so that i could finally get rid of mine one and not realizing that is not however it will work if you ever been married to more than few days you will know one thing this will never ever fix your relationship with your spouse and this will never work in your relationship with god you cannot come to God begging God to change your circumstances without first asking God to change your heart. Proper priorities means your heart, the change of your heart is more important than the change of your circumstances. The change of your mind is more important than the change of your life. Can somebody say amen? They come to Jesus and they ask Jesus for mercy. Yet Jesus doesn't give them healing like with others where Jesus would touch a person and immediately leprosy will leave. Jesus doesn't speak a word and says be cleansed like he did with others. Jesus doesn't lay his hands upon them so that the leprosy leaves. He actually tells them as we've read in verse 14, he says go and show yourselves to the priests. And the scripture says that they didn't even ask any questions. What about our healing? what about our leprosy but see they knew Jesus knew what they wanted they trusted that Jesus knew their intentions and Jesus knew their problems and the Bible says as they walked it's interesting that not when Jesus spoke not when they arrived but as they walked they were cleansed I have a word for somebody this morning there's times when God heals right on the spot but there are times when you take a step by step in faith and you notice the problem you had before you have no more there are times when deliverance happens when you are on the prayer line or when you're laying your hands and you're praying with the minister, the man of God through YouTube or through Emmanuel TV. But there are certain things that as you walk with God, as you take step by step every single day in faith, you will begin to notice some chains falling off, some cleansing happening as you walk by faith. There are blessings we get when we come to Jesus but there are other things we get by walking in faith I've had healings in my life I've had breakthroughs in my life but most of them not all most of them happened as I walked I've had encounters with God where I would feel his presence in a way that I cannot describe but rarely they happened in the service most of them they happened as 
I walked. I know a lot of people who exactly the same way and they could testify today that as they walked, God started to cleanse their life. I value prayer lines. I value man of God or the atmosphere where Holy Spirit's presence moves mightily. I value worship experience where you lift your hands and you feel literally goosebumps going through your body. I value those moments where on Friday night when I was at the camp in Salem and about 11 people came to testify of instant healing that they received while we were praying. And they started to share that as, as we were praying, heat was going through the painful parts of their body. That is so wonderful. I value those moments. But I also know a man of faith lives by faith, walks by faith. And your miracle might not happen in an instant. It might happen as you walk. Don't underestimate the importance of your process. Don't underestimate the importance of your walk with God. Don't underestimate the importance of every Sunday attendance to church. Because if you come once, like, well, I didn't get anything. If you come just one month, it's like, well, I didn't get anything. Well, I've been listening to the Word of God, reading the Word of God, I didn't get anything. Maybe you're one of the lepers whom Jesus is going to heal as He gives you an instruction as you commit to a process and a walk of righteousness. Can somebody say amen? Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. I'm reminded of the story of Israelites when they were in Egypt. And God through the blood of the Lamb, which was symbolic of the blood of Jesus, our Savior, sets them free from Egypt. He protects them from the death of the firstborn. Yet, when they were relieved and sent off from Egypt, Pharaoh and all of his army was still intact. The Bible says they walked out from Egypt with boldness, with singing tambourines songs of praise finally 300 years 330 years of slavery is done with um, and we are going to go forward into the promised land but their, their joy was soon turned into a deep deep despair when they started to hear the noises of chariots and the horses right behind them and they recognized the pharaoh was not coming to give them gifts they recognized that the army of Egyptians is not coming to say final goodbye they recognize Pharaoh is coming and he looks angry he has this Facebook status mad ready to kill and Israel does what every Christian always do oh God why did you oh God why went from God you're so awesome two minutes ago to God your soul why did you do this and that's not people of faith who do that and they start to complain and complain and complain and complain and God said something very interesting God said to Israel go forward imagine you have an enemy in front behind you you cannot go forward fast enough he will catch up there's no way around it and the worst part is you can't go forward because in front of you is a sea and that's how always we feel when we have a sickness in our body. I can't go forward. I can't walk by faith. I'm in pain. I can't walk in purity. I'm addicted. I can't walk with God. Why? I have this thing on me called laziness and it keeps me. I have this battle with the blankets every morning. I can't go on. I want you to notice God is not going to ask you to do something that's always easy. God didn't say, I'm going to kill the Egyptians, open the Red Sea, and then you walk. God says, no. He says, you begin to walk. I will open the sea. And as the sea was opened, the Bible says, as they walked through this impossible situation, God drowned the enemy in the place that was so impossible for them to walk through. As you walk, God will deal with your past many times we say no God please I want to deal with my Pharaoh and then I will commit myself to God I want to deal with my issues and then I will commit myself to the purposes of God the funny part is that you will not be able to deal with Pharaoh he's stronger than you the only way is to let God deal with your Pharaoh as you obey God and let God mess with your past can somebody say amen 
And so many of us, people who say things like, I need to first deal with this, I need to work with this, I need to fix this, I need to fix that, and then I will commit myself to the obedience of God. The problem with that is by the time you're done, you're gone. Pharaoh will have you for his lunch. He is stronger than you. You can't beat your past. If you would, you would have done it a long time ago. You would have never been captured by it. Don't tell me you are going to deal with your past. If you would be able to, you wouldn't have a past. You can't deal with it on your own. The only way is not to turn back to deal with something in the past. But sometimes, honestly, let the past scream and yell and holler at you. You simply go forward. Even when going forward seems like going to a sea, you go forward. Even if going forward seems a suicide. Even if moving forward beyond the past seems scary, seems worse than actually returning to the past, you go forward. As they walked, they got cleansed. As Israel walked, God drowned the enemy. There is a power in not trying to get healed, but trying to walk by faith. There is power in not just trying to get delivered, but trying to submit yourself to the power that delivers the power of God's word. There is a power, not in trying to always dealing with things popping up from the past, but to be focused and to go forward into the calling and the purposes of God. And as you see, you look back and you realize the loud Pharaoh is no more. There is power in what God said to Lot run to the mountain but what about Sodom God said as you walk I will set Sodom on fire as you walk forward as you go forward I will deal with your past I will deal with your sickness I will deal with your situation I will deal walk with God. Walk in your faith. Walk in your purposes. Don't take leaps of faith. Don't have this what most Christians have. This one month. Yeah! For God, everything is so fire. Ah! And like a submarine next three years. <laughs> Secret service Christian. Not showing up in church for months, for years until another problem shows up. That's not how God wants us to live. Can somebody say amen? There are miracles that will happen as we walk with God, not just as when we come to Jesus. The second thing or the third thing I wanted to share with you was the fact Jesus doesn't give them a promise. He only gives them a command. Now think about it. Most of us know there is a power in Jesus' promise. But very few of us know that there is power in Jesus' commands. God's commands, not only His promises, have power. Imagine, Jesus doesn't tell them they will get healed. Jesus only tells them where to go. If I would be a leper, I would say, before we do, what are our chances of getting healed? <laughs> I don't mind walking 10 more miles but I've been walking for the past 25 years a leper and I don't need another rabbi tell me where to go I need to know do I even have a 50% chance of getting healed do I have 50% of my leprosy be gone I mean I can settle for 50 but I need to know I need to know some kind of a some promise I mean come on give me some hope Jesus doesn't give them a hope I mean read the Bible it says he tells them go show yourself to the priest okay and they go show themselves to the priest. You know, Jesus' clothes have power. Jesus' spit has power. I would always said, I always I would rather take Jesus' spit than Judas' kiss. <laughs> I would rather have Jesus spit at me than Judas, Judas kiss me. God protect us from those kisses in Jesus' name. But Jesus' spit has power. Jesus' garments have power. Jesus' promises has power. But somehow we think Jesus' commands, they 
They force us to do things. Can I tell you something today? Jesus' commands are packed with power. And when they are acted upon, power is released. They bring a crippled man to Jesus, lays on his bed, and Jesus forgives his sin. The man is still crippled. The man is still lame. The man still cannot walk. And Jesus looks at him and says, get up. That's a command. He didn't say, you will walk. He didn't say, you will get up. He doesn't give him a promise. He didn't say, you will get power. He just tells, looks at the man who the reason why he came to Jesus, he can't walk. And Jesus tells him to do the opposite of what he cannot do. He says, do it. If I would be that man, I would say, well, the problem is, the reason why I'm here is because I can't walk. And Jesus says, when I commend you, there is a power that follows the command. And when you try to act on it, my power only then is released. Not when I commend, when you act. Many people say, I can't obey God. I can't pray. I can't read the Bible. I can't bring people to Jesus. I can't speak. I can't give my finances. I can't do this. I can't do this. If God tells you to do it, act on it. You may not be able to do it a minute before he tells you, but when he tells you to do it, in his command is the power for you to do it. And when you act on it and realize God's eyes have power, his breath has power. And if he uttered a word, that means in that word is the power to do it. God will not ask you to do something. He doesn't give you power to do it. And when does he give you power? When you choose to act on his command. When you choose to act on his word. That is when his power is released. I remember when Pastor Benihin shared how he got healed. God told him to preach. The problem is that he stuttered. He stuttered so much, especially when he would get nervous. He would stutter that he couldn't pronounce a word. And the moment he would get up to preach, the stuttering would stop. Because God's power is released when we trust in his commands. When his command says, pursue purity, you can't say, I can't. I'm addicted to pornography. Get up and His power will enable you to be pure from pornography. If His word says do not smoke, if God places and says you cannot do that, you say well the problem is nicotine you don't understand God how it affects the brains there's this addictive you know personality that I have. No, 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 no. You have to say simply this God I trust your word. I will act on your word and the power from your word will be released in my life. Jesus says commands not only his promises have power in them. People nowadays say things like the reason I committed this sin is because I was defeated. Imagine your child coming to you and says, the reason why I don't wash the dishes, vacuum the house, and obey you is because I get defeated. And you will come to them and you say, let me show you what real defeat looks like. <laughs> you will take a belt and defeat them <laughs> and defeat their defeat. No, come on, we all know that the reason why kids don't do these things. It's not because they're defeated, because they're disobedient. Yet when we come to God and we smoke, drink, rebel against our parents, we don't do the right thing. We come to God, we say, oh, you just got so defeated. The devil is a liar. You didn't get defeated. You were disobedient. And when you diagnose your problem properly, then God can deal with it properly. When you come to God and instead of saying, oh God, I got so defeated last night that I watched this movie and I knew you didn't want me to do. No, if you come to God and say, God, I was such a rebel, such a disobedient, wicked, wretched, blind sinner. Have mercy on me. God will help you. Don't call your sin for what it's not. And don't think miracles will happen only because you are going to get delivered. It's when you are going to trust God's commands also. 
not only his promises amen, amen. I always hear young people who say well I can't I can't stop this the question is not can you stop it the question is can you obey can you obey if I ask you can you go pick up that garbage I just can't pick up that garbage why is it too, too heavy or you're too weak yes I'm too weak and the garbage is too heavy the problem is not it's a piece of paper you can pick it up the question is not can you pick up the garbage the question is can you obey what I asked you to do and that's exactly how God wants us to have with him that we obey him and that's when the power will be released in our life can somebody say amen, amen. come on let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ The last, the last thought that I want to share from this story. So the first thought that I shared is the fact that we have to ask for His mercy, not just our healing. The second thought is the fact that we have to understand there is a power in the process when we take steps with God. And then the, the third thought that we shared is that there is power in the Word of God, not only in the promises of God. There is power in the commands of God, not only in His touch. But one more thing that we need to share and that is the fact that there is power in proper priorities that the whole message is about priorities there is a cleansing power in proper priorities ten lepers who have not been with their families for a very long time ten lepers who probably some already have children before or maybe after ten lepers who have relatives who have places to go to a family to show themselves in front and they're coming to Jesus and Jesus commands them to go into something called a temple and to see someone not their uncle auntie cousin grandma grandpa father mother son daughter wife girlfriend boyfriend he says go and show yourself to your priest first and then when one leper who already was healed come back to Jesus Jesus tells him your faith has made you well and this is what he says now you go your way whatever you want to go go but Jesus doesn't tell them to go where they want to go in the beginning he tells them to go where he wants them to go and as they go where he wants them to go they get cleansed so then when they can go where they want to go they can be a blessing to that environment because Jesus knows their family does not need a leper family needs a father not a leper family needs a father a mother not a leper and Jesus knows that if you don't do what I ask you to do then you come to your own way you cannot be beneficial to that you are not blessed the first thing you have to do is do what I ask you to do because in that process I am gonna do a work inside of you that then when you do what you want to do you will be blessed in it that's why we give tithe we first give what God wants when you give 10 percent so then when you do your 90 you can have God's blessing on it I'll rather have 90 percent cleansed by God than 100 percent full of leprosy and most of us Jesus tells us put me first in your finances like, no 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 you don't understand I need to go I need to do this I have bills I have car payment I have this I have this I have this I have this and we are literally leprosying our finances and then we don't have time to come back to God but if you put God first then you are clean and Jesus tells you now you go your way do what you want to do do what is your dreams do what is your goal I remember the best marriage advice that I had when we were dating still and we went to a marriage seminar with my wife and one pastor who is also a marriage counselor he got up and he said the best thing you can do for your marriage is with your marriage build the kingdom of God and make the kingdom of God the church and the ministry a priority he says God in return will build up your marriage he said if you make a decision to build your marriage first and put church and the kingdom of God second don't expect help from above 
he said God adds those things to those who seek him first and he said if you don't have time for God to be first you will rarely find time for him to be second how many of you you woke up in the morning and you didn't have time to pray and you recognize you didn't pray at all because God doesn't do good being second your wife won't do good being second your children won't do good being second to something else they always go crazy God does good when he is second when we do what Jesus says when we put him first the right priority I know that the children oh but I'm healed I need to go see my family oh I'm healed but I get I need to go see my neighbors my uncle needs to know this uncle he was always with me he sent me bread when I was in the leprosy camp I need to go there Jesus no my temple and the priest is first your way is second why so then when you go your way you can be cleansed and be a blessing to them hug them kiss them and be with them because if you go your way first you will be a leper if you go my way I will cleanse you and then I will bless your way my friends I want to encourage us today put God's mission above your ambition your ambitions have to be second God's mission and that is to bring people to Jesus have to be first you want God to bless your way go his way when you go his way he will bless your way put priority in your finances put God in your finances in your marriage put God there in your day put God in the beginning in your work in your put God meaning make a purpose to pursue what matters to God which is salvation of souls and God in return will help you in the things that matter to you I remember a testimony of a, of a man who who we know here at our church uh, named Jason he was addicted to to drugs and drinking and a few other things and brother Larry he, he knows Jason pretty well and most of us here we know Jason pretty well many many years ago when he was addicted to these things he decided to he, really, he realized that I'm a leper and I am not going to be a good to my children. I'm not going to be good to my wife. He already had a wife and he already had a son. And he admitted himself to a Christian rehab center. It's like a discipleship program for one year where he decided to be completely free from all of these addictions and all of these problems. Because he knew if I go back to my family, I want to come back clean, not a leper. He stayed there for one year. The program was finished and he was ready to go home but this program had one more year a second year and as this program was approaching to the end he felt strongly in his heart that he wanted to stay a little bit longer because he heard so many people who get out from this program and they go back into drugs in a few years and he's like I don't want to ever go back into drugs I don't want to take one more year to just get closer so that I could be with my family for the rest of my life and be not a drug addict but to be a cleansed holy father the problem is toward the end of the first year his son has a hole in his heart and he needs the father to be there as he's going to go through surgeries as he's going to go through all kinds of scans and his wife calls him he says please come and be with your son he's like oh yeah I'm finishing the first year but God is asking me to stay one more year and the wife was so mad he said how dare does God know you have a son does God not care about the fact that your son has a hole he said God knows better how to care for my son than I know but he said my son does not need a drug addict my son is a man who's gonna love him and be an example and you know what Jason does stays one more year in this discipleship program the funny part God heals his son of a heart problem Jason finishes the second year and today you look at Jason and it's been over nine years he's walking free from all of those chains he used to be bound up by why because first go show yourself to the priest and then you come back and Jesus says now you're blessed to go your way you first as a young person you dedicated yourself to holiness and now when God brings the right person God blesses your marriage you can have romance dating sex all this stuff with God's blessing why because first you dedicate yourself to a life not flirting around fornicating and doing all kinds of things but going God's way so then God can bless you when you go your way I want to ask you today 
please choose God's way you will beg him one day to bless yours and I'm gonna be very honest with you you can't mock God you can't God is not a toy you can't break into heaven's, heaven's safe and just get whatever you want disobeying God you gotta as a Christian born again put God first please put God's priorities first your school is important but saving souls is more important your, 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 your hobbies are important but your home group is important but church attendance is important your, I know your bills and all of these things Starbucks and, and new shoes and the new phone that's coming up in September is important but you're tied to God it's not about church it's about you doing what God wants you to do so God can cleanse you and then God can bless your your way and whatever you want to do in your life God is not after taking things from you God just hates seeing a leper being with the family God just hates your own way not to be blessed by him and God says this is only one way I can bless this if you choose my way you know I know another young man whom we attended his funeral just a few weeks ago who had a similar situation he was a very dear to us and we had the same advice I brought Jason to him and I said please I will drive you to a place where you can be free please stay there as long as you need I know those two years are so important but please two years are nothing you have a whole life in front of you and his excuse was this I have a daughter and she's more important to me he died two weeks ago God cannot be mocked if you go your way you're on your own if you choose God's way it might be hard it might not be easy sometimes you may look you say why am I doing this but you will be cleansed God will bless your way your marriage your health your finances your family your children and the future generations blessings are not accidental blessings are not God going to have a mini mini money blessings in heaven are not like lottery it's just whoever is lucky blessings in heaven is about seek first the kingdom of God and God says then I will add things to you these things are not accidental these things are there's repercussions re receptivity that happens in our life salvation is a gift from God our peace and righteousness is a gift from God but you can be saved and live in hell on earth you can be saved on this earth and live cursed on earth and it's not about just getting another spray of anointing water or getting another anointing sticker on your door if that door is not open to God no sticker can help you make a decision today let's all make a decision to go God's way first and let God bless our way amen